Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the things that are happening today, along with a couple guests. I got uh, Catherine Hungerford from uh, Missoula Agent Services talking about giving trees. I got Hayden Groats here to talk about Washington's Children's Shelter, their ho holiday home tour, which is a once a year type of chance where you guys get to check out a home tour of the Washington's Children's Shelter. Um, one time a year, they usually close it to the public, um, so you get to see kind of like where some of the kids who don't have a home for the holidays where they live. So we're going to talk a little, a little bit about those and more later in the show, but let's talk a little bit about weather. It is currently 30, <laughs> sorry, I'm winded. Okay, so it's 32 <laughs> degrees outside. Your high is going to be 37. Your low is going to be 27. Um, you can expect chances of showers happening today with 30% chance, but it's going to be partly sunny, partly cloudy. I don't know how it can be partly sunny, but partly cloudy all week long with uh, chances of showers and snow through the, uh, up until the weekend. So we'll get more on this as we uh, get into it. But let's talk a little bit about some of the news that are happening. Uh, so one of the big things that are happening is that housing prices are going up in the city of Missoula. And if you thought last January it was hard to get a home between 180,000 and 220,000, then you're earned for a rude awakening. According to the Missoula Organization of Realtors, the median sale prices of all homes sold in the urban area between June 1st and October 31st of this year was $290,900, uh, 8 14, uh, 8.14% 8 increase over the same time period last year, which was a medium of 268,000, um, which is a jump of 5.2% from 2016. Since 2008, 2009, there has a huge been, there was a price drop because of the uh, recession, which was about 9% at the time. And as a result of the housing um, crisis, um, let's see, let's see. Uh, but of course, what most what goes up must come down. But right now, it's a buyer's market in Missoula, and many prices are being uh, brought up to low supply. And affordable housing is what Missoula is working on making happen for folks. In state news, um, uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis reports that bad egg loans are on the rise in Montana and North Dakota as crops and livestock prices soften. The percentage of bad loans is double what it ha was after the recession. Bad egg loans are often indicators of things to come, according to the uh, federal government, and with uh, bankruptcies on the upturn elsewhere, they could point the future challenges for Montana agriculture. Uh, there are dips in prices for farmers, which are result in lower returns and payoffs these loans, but you won't have to sell the farm because many egg loans are different from what a mortgage would be like as well. U.S. Department of Agriculture posted that a $151.9 million in payments to Montana farmers to cover price losses and crop damage in 2017. Many Montana officials are looking into bank examinations, which are done 18, every 18 months and increase the frequency to push as little as every six months for bank checks and balances within banks. So those are some of the things that the state is doing uh, to help uh, uh, the egg farmers. And of course, in national news, nothing has divided Americans like photos from the U.S.-Mexican border. That seems to be a big uh, um, transition from over the weekend on Sunday. Uh, many uh, folks are praising the military for putting a stop to folks trying to cross the border while other things this is a human rights violation. Uh, on Sunday, the U.S. agents closed a major uh, border crossing and fired tear gas as migrants attempted to cross into the U.S. border from Tijuana, Mexico. The migrants, many of whom have been a part of a caravan of Central American asylum seekers, were protesting the slow pace with which the U.S. has been uh, pr processing asylum claims. More than 5,000 migrants from Central America have reached the border town of Tijuana as part of a caravan that traveled 3,000 miles, most are from Honduras, where gang violence is widespread. And the, the right to seek asylum is protected by both U.S. and international law. President Trump has sent nearly 6,000 U.S. troops, including military engineers and military police, to the U.S.-Mexico border to support customs and border protection. But a lot of these um, agents are put a little further back while they're taking... Uh, um, instruction by a border patrol and police officials there. Uh, many of the military aren't doing too much there, but they are helping with um, the day-to-day -day operations of the border. Command says that the military pr uh, pr provided non-lethal assistance, although Trump said he okayed um, use of lethal force, which is the decision used uh, to use lethal force is limited to protecting federal agents and at the discretion of the Secretary of Defense. So just... Uh, 
those are some of the big things that are happening um, locally and in the in, in the in the nation as well. So uh, before I go, I just want to tell you uh, that this will be the last chance to check out some of these uh, art. Uh, installations at the Clay Studio, and I have another art installation at uh, a couple other places as well. But uh, without further ado, I'm going to show you this, and when I come back, I'm going to have Hayden Groats to talk about um, holiday home tour at the Washington Children's Shelter. Hey, we're here with Hayden Groats, and she is with the Washington Children's Shelter. And you're here to talk about a uh, holiday home tour, which is happening this Sunday on your uh, location at the uh, 4978 uh, Buckhouse Lane. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. So this is, uh, yeah, the holiday home tour out by Blue Mountain next to the Peak Racket Club. Yep. And this is a once a year, once in a lifetime chance to check out the Washington Children's Shelter. I wouldn't say once in a lifetime. We do <laughs> tours all year round if anybody's interested, but it is the one time a year we open the house totally up to the public while the kids are out doing fun holiday activities and we offer tours and it's decorated from floor to ceiling and we bake cookies and there's hot chocolate and cider and it's just a really fun time of year to bring your families and teach them about what we do at Watson Children's Shelter especially during this giving time so cool yeah so what can you tell me about the Watson Children's Shelter that people don't know at home yeah so we are an emergency shelter for children infant to 14 years old that have been removed from their home for various reasons Oftentimes it's abuse, neglect, abandonment, sometimes it's just family crisis, but they come to us temporarily and while they're with us we provide them warm beds and home cooked meals every day and just a place that's warm and loving and safe. Yep. Um, and, and until, the overall support yes. that the Washington Children's Shelter provides. And also, they always ask for uh, people to donate and help support. And also, uh, one of the things that's really cool about this uh, organization is that there's also a, a donate for a wish list. It's kind of like yeah. a, um, I don't know, like a, a register. Kind of. Well, it's like uh, you can sponsor a child, if you will, and you can pick a kid's name. And we've got some needs that they have, a lot of them clothing, their clothing sizes. And then we also have um, some toys and them, some things that, you know, they hope that Santa brings for them. And they all mail their Christmas list, and we just post it for everybody. And then Santa brings everything for them on Christmas morning. So, nice. yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. So uh, what else can you tell me about uh, the Washington Children's Shelter? Oh yeah, um, so we've been around for f over 40 years now and um, again this holiday home tour is the one time of year you can tour the house, um, bring your whole family. Um, yeah. Yeah. And for more information, you can go onto their website. Yeah. Or... For more information, go to WatsonChildrenShelter.org, or you can always call the shelter and talk to me, and I can. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Cool. Yeah. And so, uh, is there a number anybody can reach you by as well? Um, yeah. Our number is four zero six five four nine zero zero five eight. Cool. So, is there anything else? I think we kind of covered everything. Yeah, it's just, I think uh, that's It's a good. holiday home tour. Happens from 11 to 2 p.m. this Sunday. Yep. Only, uh, but of course you can check it out. This will be uh, once a year. Yep. So you, you get to see it's all decorated. You have volunteers coming in on Thursday. Yes, to decorate the house, help yeah. decorate the house for the kiddos. So yeah, come join us. It's really fun, and we hope uh, we can teach you some more about what we do. All right. Well, thanks for joining. Yeah. Me. Thank you so much, Scott. And we'll be right back right after this. Awesome. Thank you. 
Hey guys, welcome back. We're here with Catherine Hungerford, and you're here just to talk about um, uh, Giving Trees. Yeah. And this is an annual event that the Museum Agent Service has done. We've interviewed these guys about this many, many years, and it's to promote the dignity, independence, and health of aging adults in the Missoula area. Yeah, that's Is that awesome. right? Well, I think you just about got our mission yeah. down perfectly. Because so. I know you guys always come in and you always yeah. say the mission, and if I don't, if I don't try to say it or tr attempt to say it, then it's like, it's all for naught. Yeah, that's true. So anyways, true. Uh, you guys are giving the gift that keeps on giving, and these are the giving trees. They and are. what can you tell us about giving trees? Well, they're pretty awesome. We have uh, trees set up around in the community, so there's a lot more locations this year, which is exciting and new for us. And it's a way for people to visit a tree, and you can take a tag and meet a real need of an older adult, you know, one of our older neighbors right here during the holiday season. So um, basic human needs like food through the Meals on Wheels program, you can take a tag and um, it can help you provide uh, hot, nutritious food for an older adults, you know, for a whole week or for 10 days or whatever you choose. So you can take the tag that, you, you know, is appealing to you. We have respite and homemaking services. So a lot of folks want to provide that for someone cool. else, especially around the holidays. And of course, Giving Trees will be all over the, the town. I have a whole list of the tree locations. Yeah. Super of Montana. Orange Street Food Farm, Go. <laughs> Burton's Classic Hair, uh, MSO Hub, CAPS Office, County Administration Office, mm -hmm. the Missoula Public Library, you can't go, of course, the Missoula Asian Services has it there yes, as we well, do. Missoula Courthouse, um, mm -hmm. Missoula Animal Control, and of course, the Missoulian. So yeah. those are many of the locations that are having the giving trees. So one of the questions uh, also is, what are some of the programs that public can choose to support in giving trees? Mm -hmm. So um, we touched a little bit on respite and homemaking. So being able to provide that is awesome. We also have a foster grandparents program. So at-risk students in the schools can receive mentoring from a foster grandparent. And so um, you know, there's a tag that, that is for that. Or you can pick a tag to provide groceries. So to provide a grocery card for an older adult you know just it's a lot of times it's those you know really important needs and um, this is the time of year we glimpse into people's hearts and we see that goodness and yeah. um, get to see the very best in people especially in the world that we live in right now it's just really really nice to see yeah and if you want to donate you can always go to missoulaagentservices.org sure. um, they have the tabs 25 50 100 500 or <laughs> other if you want to customize your own donation Yep, and we're just, we're thankful for whatever people want to do. We're just completely amazed at our wonderful community and thankful to you guys too for having us on. Yep, and let me also mention that uh, Missoula Union Services comes on here every month to talk about all the organizations that they provide people in the community. You know, yeah. like, um, they, you know, you were just talking with Hayden um, with uh, Washington, Washington. Children's Shel Children Shelter. You provided them 20 volunteers. So if you're a nonprofit, and looking for volunteers, uh, it's good to uh, shake hands and um, uh, what, what, uh, what's that called? Uh, collaborate. Collaborate, yeah. Yeah. touch elbows yeah. with the uh, Missoula Aging <laughs> Services. They provide a lot of volunteers, a lot of willing participants yeah. from many, many walks of life. It's true. And it's a, a great opportunity to get involved and also donate. So once again, uh, where can people find more information about uh, Missoula Aging Services? Sure, you can go to missoulaagingservices.org. You can also um, just give us a call. We have a call center, so needs are met immediately at 728-7682. Again, that number is 728-7682. All right. Well, thank you very much. Is there anything else you want to mention? Um, you know, just to express appreciation and thanks and gratitude to our community that makes our work possible. We're very appreciative. And to you guys, thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks. We'll be uh, right back right after this. Hi everyone, I'm Joel Baird, the General Manager of Missoula Community Access Television, inviting you to another edition of Out and About. Today we're going to visit with Lisa Tate. She's the Executive Director of the National Museum of Forest Service History. Was the building here? No, the building was actually a historic ranger's cabin oh. from the Bungalow Ranger District on the Clearwater National Forest. And you can see on the side of the building how the logs are, are cut. This cabin is just one exhibit. Right. So we're a national museum. We're based here in Missoula. And this is our campus site that we're developing. However, we do work all over the United States. Wow. Thanks for tuning in to Look Before You Speak. And today, 
we have a real treat. We're going to be interviewing the artist Doug Baldwin. And we're here at the Clay Studio of Missoula. We're outside in the kiln area. But we're going to go inside and, and talk to Doug right now. <laughs> Me? You know, I, why would he do that? But that was the, I had, had only a couple of ceramic classes yeah. from him. Well, it was difficult when my father died. I was 20 months old, and um, so I was kind of, um, I remember from early times just feeling like a burden that my siblings took care of me a lot. My mother was um, a religious, hardworking woman that I think kind of got stuck in the anger phase of grief. So on the outside, we had really a strong image of respect amongst a large church of people and a neighborhood and schools. Um, but at home, there was, there was some abuses that until my mother died in 2011, my siblings never called it abuse, and I rarely did either. We just said our mother was um, a slave driver and really rough on us. And that was kind of an understatement. Um, I saw... And if you ask about borrowing money to get a quality college education, yeah, it's expensive, and yeah, I wish it didn't have to happen. On the other hand, college graduates make almost twice as much money as those who don't go to college. And actually, the investment you get by going to college enables you to pay back uh, that student loan. Now, you can say that, well, yeah, but why should I have to bear that burden? Somebody else should. Have, let's say you're up on YouTube and you don't have a digital distribution deal, or you do, you're up on Spotify and iTunes, you can track and see where people are listening. So you develop your bases. You find, yeah, you find your base, and you need to, to break out of that base, where before, 10 years ago, you couldn't do that. You don't know who's listening, where they're listening. You're just hoping you're, you're like labels would throw money at media and marketing and all these things, hoping that they see something. Now you can say, okay, I do well here in Montana, but I'm doing really well in Alabama and Boston. Weird. Okay. Then you go on your social media and you figure out who there is going to champion you just like you would at a label or at a publisher or with your management company. Who's that one person that is really on board? You need to find that super fan or yourself. You need to get out with your social media and go, how do I find a place to go play there and bring enough people that make sense for me to travel to that spot? The and first <clears throat> series of shows that we did that I was a part of the Pearl Jam team, um, one of the shows happened to be the first time that the band played at the stadium here on the other end of the stadium, the north end of the stadium, and um, uh, it was pretty cool to come back and, uh, especially now, to look back on that time and realize how, how much has happened since then. Um, pretty special. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of good programs happening on MCAT, and you can all access those by logging on to MCAT.org. All right, guys, the city of Missoula is annexing the airport boulevard, expressway, a whole bunch of places up there. There's like a line up there somewhere where it's like a borderline between city and county, and now uh, many of those places are going to be uh, uh, paying all those sweet, sweet, delicious city taxes. But they got to do a couple other things, which means that they're going to uh, amend a title 20.22, all that stuff. So basically, means is that a lot of the um, uh, city a lot of the city ordinance and annexation will also be overlaid with uh, the new properties that'll be acquired through the annexation. So um, a lot of things that are happening in terms of this has to do with the fact that um, one um, Coca Cola is moving up in that area. Uh, they're going to move from Third Street to the new location up Expressway, and they want signs signage. And so Joe Easton, he is a representative of Seven Hall LLC who wants to add something that has that they have been working on on with the county for over a year, but then if uh if the with the annexation of this overlay, we would have the problem with um having to basically 
re uh, re up the permitting processing um, with all this and stuff. So here's Joe. I think it would be easy problem to solve, and I realize that time is a factor for your considerations, both of the zoning and of the annexation, and that is to roll forward into the new M MDP overlay, continuing of the existing zoning sign code, the definition, and the standards uh, specifically for that overlay. Obviously, Title 20, the sign code applies throughout the city, but here's an opportunity to have the existing sign code within the county's development park roll forward and, from our perspective in our project, not change what we've already drawn and have 95% drawings. Marie will speak after me and discuss what we proposed at, for a variance, which was the illumination only, because the sign met, from the county standards, the uh, sign and the sign size and the location. Thanks for your consideration. All right, so that was Joe Easton, and he was talking a little bit more about like saying, "Hey, we already did the work with the county. The county pretty much has this approved. Why not we just kind of carry this over with this new overlay?" Of course, this would go against city sign ordinances, which uh, usually uh, assesses a certain size limitation, illumination limitation, and also the amount of signs which Coca-Cola wants to do. They want to do like a sign that people can see on the street driving down expressway they also want to have a sign on the building so that's that's kind of what they want to do but with the city being part of it it'd be basically it's just a storefront sign no no additional signage or anything like that so mary mccray development services talks about annexation issues with permits uh city versus the county and to be honest the landowners association guidelines were not something that we were implementing so i guess i'm making the assumption that if they had their zoning their development park zoning and these guidelines that they would be uh, cohesive and work well together so our ndp overlay is reasonably consistent with what was um, required in the county zoning thank you all right so um um, many of the people on the city council were pretty much uh, all, all right with this. This is a long and taxing to get through, but the main point of these ideas is uh, to move permitted process through the city, uh, regardless of you know if you get county approval. I mean, count. I mean, like the city is within the county, so technically it's still technically county approval, but the uh, the. Uh, permission and stuff falls along the lines of the city uh, because many of these cities, these areas are annexed. They have to follow the same rules that apply to other businesses within the city limits. John DeBarre responds to some of the issues and how the city can work with these folks to help make it easier on everybody. I guess the only thing that um, I can offer in this regard is to um, and I'm going to speak on behalf of development services is to pledge uh, our um, effort, best efforts to help them work through this process in a way that um, best meets their, their needs. And I understand Mr. Johnson's issues with regard to landscaping and uh, semi-access, and I think there's probably ways that we can address that through the design process, and, and I'm, I'm sure, too, that there's a way we can address this signage-related issue. Um, my hope is to, uh, as best as possible, adhere to what the um, existing regs are, uh, but to provide some degree of flexibility so that the, these two developments can uh, work their way through the process and, uh, and get on with things. But I All right, so that's what John Debari had to say about this. Uh, just uh, overall communication between both sides. Julie Armstrong supports this and um, this and many other projects in the same vein um, in terms of um, moving forward. I'm, I'm reluctantly supporting this only because I have full faith that Missoula City Development Services will work through the issues with with our new customers and that we will not be placing undue hardship on them and giving them good value for their new tax dollars they're going to be paying. Um, I, I believe that we will be granting variances and perhaps waiving fees if we come across something that clearly we've as Dr. Dabari said, upset the apple cart. Um, and I, I hope that is the case, so I will be supporting it. All right, so that was Julie Armstrong. And of course, needless to say, uh, the support for um, putting this overlay with a certain amended motions to help um, um, help open the communication um, traffic between permitting, landscaping, signage, and all that stuff. But most of all, they'll have to go through the design review process through the city council chambers, which is pretty much like, I was like oh, is it sign too big? Is like... 
Yes. Is it, how about this? Is like a little bit smaller? And then th that's kind of like design review board. It, it's pretty much, much that in a nutshell. They basically talk for an hour about the size of a sign and the placement of a sign. It's not that interesting to talk about, but it's very interesting to kind of think about um, annexation and the transition between county and the city uh, um, ordinances and uh, policies and stuff like that. So, of course, the city uh, council approved. The city wants to avoid having large bright signs that affect local residents in the areas, kind of like putting floodlights. Imagine like, you know, like it's like you can't let the sign people just do whatever they want because a lot of times some signs get a little too bright. They've had some issues in the past with some of the um, buildings in locally um, in the areas that had some examples I talked about on the show as well, where uh, some signs illuminate a little too bright, but also you're uh, mixing with commercial residential areas where people live in apartments and stuff like that. And there's um, sometimes they put in floodlights for the greater good to make sure that maybe nobody steals from your car, but then at the same time, the light is too bright, so it's even harder to sleep. So, you know, peace of mind on two different levels. Peace of mind and sleep versus peace of mind, not someone not stealing from your car. Anyways, that, that was just an example. Uh, but of course, you can watch many of these um, issues and support for current and future projects. The City Council has uh, hosts a public meeting every uh, Monday at 7 p.m. Um, you can watch it online at ci.missoula.mt.us. Or if you miss it, you can always go to mcat.org, mcat.org. I say mcat.org is the best way to watch City Council. Uh, there's not as loud of a, a, as a buzz that you hear from some of the city council. It seems like it, uh, the processing look, seems a little cleaner, and then the, the audio is a little crisper. Uh, so you can see th those meetings at MCAT.org. Once again, I just want to remind you guys that Winter Days is happening December 26th uh, through the 28th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. This is for kids age 9 to 13, roughly. We can always accept 8-year-olds, or we can always accept a 14-year-old if need be. And this is just a good way to uh, uh, help parents with the uh, holiday blues as they get right back into work on the 26th of December, and their kids have nowhere to go. So you want your kids to uh, enjoy some three days of fun and filmmaking. All it costs is $99. It just sounds better, right? Plus, it's not triple digits, so it's it fits on the page. See, it just fits. It just fits like right here. It's like it's perfect. Ninety nine dollars. And <laughs> all right. And if you want more information, you can look me up at wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. If you look up Wake Up Missoula on the Google, you can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and the Twitter. All those wonderful websites and more. Um, I got something special for you guys. I usually show dubbing and stuff, but this time I'm going to show you a, uh, a fan film. Um, it doesn't star me, but it's going to start off with me. So I'm going to start to stop talking and throw it over to me for our uh, Saturday Shorts movie of the week, The Kid Doctor. It's getting late. Huh, where did that come from? That's weird. Just put yourself together and let's go. 
So, where's our destination, Doctor? If I know the chart as well, which I don't, we are probably somewhere. Oh, that's great. Wait, what's somewhere? Somewhere, that's where. Uh. Ah! Doctor! What do we do? There's a blanket in the room. Pick it up. Oh. Joy. Wait a minute. Now this feels suspicious. Seems fine to me. What should I do with the blanket? Just put it on the table. It's another adventure with the doctor and his companions. Yeah! yeah! I don't know what I'd do without you guys besides get a decent job. Yeah! Hey, it's kind of cold in here, isn't it? I don't honestly notice that kind of thing. That's because you're you're not hu human. Where where'd that blanket go? Chumzel, pallies, pallies, chums. Okay. Okay. Derps. I'm out of here. Unhuman, a kid time lords. What? It's really cold in here.
we all learned something from that. If you can fold your clothes, you could save the universe. Think about it. We all have our own personal journey that we have to do, and that was his. All right, let's move on to some events. Uh, hey, it teaches about uh, responsibility. Um, it's uh, fuel efficient. It's uh, extreme. It's low calorie. Um, Wednesday, Coffee Outside Missoula. It already happened, but you guys can check it out every Wednesday at Coffee Outside Missoula. It's at various locations. They have coffee setups. So if you are a bike person, bike ped folk that are just wandering around downtown and all sorts of things, and they're going to be at various locations to give you free coffee for seeing, hey, Good job for not driving and continue, um, continually perpetuating the fossil fuel machine that we all drive, especially me this morning. Uh, story time in Frenchtown in Tiny Tales and Power Place. Story time uh, is a uh, Missoula Public Library event, and they sponsored it at the Frenchtown Branch Library at 10:30 a.m. In Power Place is a, a great place at the Missoula Food Bank where Tiny Tales takes place at 10:30. Uh, Hands-on science investigating plants. You want to investigate some plants because they're going to do something. I just know it. Um, so dive into a world of plants and explore the lives through the, their different structures, how to identify them, and so much more. And it's happening at the Spectrum Discovery Center at 11 a.m. But if you stick around long enough for the afternoon, they have a makerspace active activity. Makey, makey. Create a video game controller, piano keys, and much more using cardboard and conductive materials. Um, Scrabble and Bridge. Got to get that Scrabble and Bridge at Missoula Senior Center every Wednesday at 1230-ish. Um, have some lunch. Uh, with some seniors at the Senior Center, and then enjoy uh, destroying them at Scrabble or Bridge. But also on uh, Thursdays and Fridays, they have other games around the same time. Stepping on, fall classes, um, Kearns Aquatic Center from 1 to 3 p.m. Uh, this is happening this week and next week, and then that's it. It's a seven-week period. Participants will learn exercises, methods, and strategies to build self-confidence, change behaviors, improve decision-making for safe, independent living, and avoid falling. Middle School Writers Group happening at Missoula Public Library starting at 3.30 p.m. If you're interested in improving your kid's skill, who is in grade 6 through 9, because that seems to be a very tender age for when a kid gets into reading, writing, and really get into that more... Uh, um, upscale uh, version of, you know, kids' books. So they go f transition from kids' book to young adults to adult books, and they either they, they learn to write, improve their writing and grammar. So this is a very crucial time in a lot of kids' lives in middle school to pick up um, language. Um, vagina monologues. Moving in and straight to it, but the University of Montana Women's Resource Center is doing an all-gendered, all-bodied production of the Vagina Monologues. It's going to be put on the, through the University of Montana's Women's Resource Center in partnership with the Good Work Studio. Um, the whole idea is uh, the child care will be provided, community members. Um, so you do not need to be a memorized uh, audition piece, uh, but that you be prepared to perform a va vagina monologue piece. Um, as well. So you, uh, it's an audition and it's happening starting at 5.30 p.m. and I believe at the University of Montana Women's Resource Center. All right, so anyways, um, Women's Comedy Workshop. So once you're done with the Vagina Monologues audition, you can jump on over to the Badlander at 6 p.m. and uh, do some comedy. It's a workshop for women and bi non-binary folk alike to participate and talk about and learn about comedy and stand-up. You can come to Badlander every last Wednesday of the month, which is today, and just learn about it until their uh, comedy revival night at 7 p.m. So you can sign up to do some um, stand-up comedy, or you can just go to the workshop and just talk with other funny women. Um, 7 p.m. comedy. Of course, th uh, 9 p.m. is when karaoke start where the real comedy begins. Um, three printing workshop at 6.30 p.m. Um, three printing workshop every uh, other Wednesday, it seems like the, uh, the Missoula Public Library hosts a 3D printing workshop. You get an idea of how 3D space works and how you can design your um, 3D models to be printed on the Missoula Public Library's 3D printer. All right, I just want to give a, a big shout out. One of my boys is uh, working on White Christmas at the University of Montana. Not since um, MCT did it uh, back in 2009, I believe, is when um, MCT did uh, White Christmas. And it's an enchanting Ir Irving Berlin original uh, scored uh, musical about um, two World War II veterans in show businesses, uh, show business right after the World War II. And... Uh, on their way to a ski lodge where they meet their old general from World War II who is having some money troubles with the ski resort. So they put it on a show to help support uh, this man. And there's love along the way. All right. So anyways, this happens um, 
from now until December 2nd, um, 7.30 p.m. They have a matinee on December 2nd at 2 p.m. And then that's it. That's all you get to, get to do. This is the uh, last performance, I believe, of the semester. This is a student uh, run, a student run uh, production as well. Um, so just so you know, that's why they're having it so early um, towards the end of the semester, because the semester pretty much ends pretty much the week after. So that's all you got to know about that. If you are interested in finding out more about Missoula events happening for tonight, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. And I'm going to use this as a transition into your Thursday events. All right, so Thursday, whew, you got open hours in the makerspace, all from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., and then 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. They have an, another event happening in their makerspace from 1 to 2 p.m., but open hours in makerspace. Once you take everything that you learned from 3D printing tonight, you can go back there tomorrow and just hit the ground running with some 3D printing. Spectrum, Spectrum Discovery Center comes back to them for wildfire science, um, 350, if you're four and over, but if you're under three, you get in free. Easy step to eBooks starting at 12 p.m. noon tomorrow. Uh, this class is an introduction to an overview of eBook e resources allowed in the library, available in the library. I didn't say allowed. Uh, the instructor will cover how to use various e-readers to access the library's collection. Attendees are encouraged to bring their e-readers to class. The registration is required by calling 721-BOOK, otherwise known as 721-2665. Paper food chain and necklaces, Missoula Insectarium. They have also had predator feedings at 3.30 p.m., but this is from 3 to 5 p.m. You can stop in any time right after school. Um, and you can craft a paper chain necklace that explore the different roles of the little things in the food web. Uh, these small animals have power to, uh, in numbers and provide services like uh, litter collection, recycling, undertaking, fertilizing, soil uh, um, aeration, pruning, noxious weed control, food provision, and pollination. All this between the hours of 3 and 5 p.m. this afternoon. Bearing witness, stories from Missoula's Juvenile Hall, Missoula's, um, the, inner, uh, the Imagination Brewing Company at 5.30 p.m. Uh, make a change in your community. Join for an evening of stories, poetry, and art from youth in detention and the teachers who work with them. Listen as free verse teachers share their stories about kids they've met, the challenges they faced, and the moments of joy that inspired their work. Emotional Freedom Technique, Hellgate Elementary, uh, Hellgate Elementary School at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow night is a uh, powerful tool, effective and easy to use for creating change in disturbing physical and emotional blocks. Join a licensed professional con um, counselor and performance coach for this course, which will be um, experimental in nature and will give you the individual results and tools to continue tapping on your own. So this is just an uh, interesting thing to talk about emotional freedom techniques and about expressing yourself, um, but also uh, trying to figure out ways to uh, tear down some of those uh, emotional walls that you build up over the years. Elf the Musical. Hey, a lot of musicals are happening, and as we transition out of White Christmas at the University of Montana, we transition in to Elf the Musical, which will be playing from... Um, tomorrow, which is the premiere date, which is VIP night. Uh, Friday is when you can probably get tickets to, to go see it. And it's happening from November 29th through December 16th. And this is all happening um, tomorrow. Catch Buddy the Elf. Um, Christmas, spirit of this holiday season in the 2003 film adaptation of the musical of a lovable boy who grows up in the North Pole. But of course, when Buddy the Elf learns that he is a real person and not one of Santa's elves. He ventures into New York to find his real father, but his childlike innocence and infectious holiday spirit melt the most cynical of hearts as he saves Christmas while finding love and family in this charming family-friendly musical story about Buddy the Elf. Adult Dodgeball. Hey, Wind Dodgeball is open for registration, and bring your team there. It's tomorrow night, starting at 9 p.m. at the Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. Um, mini indoor activity fun, but this is to sign up your team and it's every Thursday from 9 to 10.30 p.m., and it starts tomorrow night, and it goes all the way until December 20th. So every Thursday until December 20th, and you can enjoy all those and more. If you're interested in finding out more about things that are happening uh, late night uh, tomorrow night as well, they have Party Volcano, which is DJ mch, mch music. They take pictures of you, look fabulous, whatever. Uh, Acoustic Avenue is going to be the Top Hat Lounge. Uh, they're playing... Guess this, acoustic music. Uh, you got rock and karaoke at the Dark Horse. Um, and those are some of the things that you guys can enjoy um, this, uh, this week. I'll have some more stuff this Friday as well. But of course, I wanna thank you guys for joining me this morning. 
I want to thank my guests once again, um, Catherine Hungerford from the Missoula Agent Services. She's the development director at Missoula Agent Services, and she came to talk. She came here to talk about giving trees, and you too can give to trees. Not necessarily, you're not necessarily giving to trees, but you're giving to Missoula Agent Services and their services that help provide the dignity and the independence of Asian adults within our community. And also, uh, I want to thank uh, Hayden Groats. Uh, she's with the Washington Children's Shelter. So this Sunday is the only chance you guys get to. Uh, check out the holiday home tour where you get to see where some of the kids uh, which at Washington Children's Shelter they're at max capacity for housing um, kids who are uh, in emergency shelters uh, for the holiday season and you get to see um, some of the uh, living conditions and see w what kind of uh, area and place that they have volunteers you get to meet and greet the people um, the kids will be off um, on um, oh, they won't be there the whole idea is that the kids will be off doing some fun things while people get to stay. Uh, people get to check out, kind of like Washington Children's Shelter. It's very they're very protective of their kids, but you get to see where uh, all of the money goes to and all the efforts, Bike for Shelter and all these organizations and other support from the Missoula community goes to help support the Washington Children's Shelter. Once again, you can go to MissoulaAsianServices.org for more information on how to donate to Giving Trees. Go to WashingtonChildrenShelter.org for more information on how to donate and add to a a wish list and to help provide kids a happy holidays this season. All right, so that was my little uh, soapbox moment. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining me this morning and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Skyrenf. I hope you guys have a wonderful couple days. I'll be back this Friday to talk about City Council, your flagship Friday video. We have two more weeks of flagship, but we'll have plenty of flagship Fridays for you guys going into the holidays. So thank you and goodbye. <laughs>